I visited the Isles of Scilly for a week during my school's half term and in this video I'll share with you a daily breakdown of the things that we did, how much we spent, brace yourselves for that one, and uh, my Google Maps for you to use. On the Friday after work we boarded onto GWR's Night Riviera, a sleeper train that would take us from London Paddington to Penzance in Cornwall, all in the comfort of our own beds in our own private cabin. On the Saturday we potted around Penzance in the morning, took the Skybus shuttle from the station to Land's End Airport and we boarded onto a tiny Twin Otter aircraft that took us the short 20 minute plane journey across to the island of St Mary's on the Isles of Scilly. We checked into our apartment, did a shop at the local co-op and enjoyed a fish and chips takeaway from the local food trucks and sat eating it on the edge of Porth Cressa Beach in Hugh Town. On the Sunday we boarded onto the Sea King to take a morning boat tour around Annet, the Western Rocks and Bishop's Rock Lighthouse where we got to watch on and marvel at countless seals and seabirds. Around lunchtime the boat stopped at St Agnes allowing us the option to get off here to spend the afternoon exploring the island. We first headed across the bar to Gu as it was low tide and later wandered over to Troy Town's farm to enjoy their homemade ice cream made on the premises from milk produced by their own cattle. On the Monday we boarded the trusty Sea King once again, this time headed for St Martin's where we wandered across the island taking in its beautiful vistas to enjoy lunch at the island's bakery. We thoroughly enjoyed the stunning Par Beach and hiked up to the instantly recognisable day mark. It was on St Martin's where we stocked up with a few kitchen essentials using one of the honesty boxes found all over the Isles of Scilly. In the evening we enjoyed a sunset on Porth Mellon Beach back on St Mary's. On Tuesday we boarded the Meridian bound for Tresco Island. After gawping at the helicopters coming into land right by the footpath, we again booked it across the island to Old Grimsby where we had the most gorgeous seafood lunch at the Ruin Beach Cafe with its pretty beach views and quaintly crumbling architecture and flora. We headed back on ourselves passing gorgeous white sand pathways leading to just as picture perfect beaches. The New Inn, one of the island's golden pheasants that's shaped like a pheasant but whose features are more akin to the colour of a parrot before arriving at the Tresco Abbey Gardens. We were greeted at the entrance by a handful of gorgeous red squirrels who were enjoying the nut feeder and spent far too long gawping at them. We eventually pulled ourselves away to have a nosy around the Valhalla Museum and the countless tropical plants inside the gardens, a real highlight of the trip for me. Wednesday was a little different. We stayed put on St Mary's in the morning, exploring Hugh Town in a bit more depth and sampling some of the edible delights purchased at the farmers, makers and growers market held each Wednesday in the square before then wandering around the garrison walls. After lunch we took the sapphire across to Samson, an uninhabited island with no key, so a wet landing from a small dinghy was required. Once on the island we learned about its history back when it was inhabited and explored some of the ruined cottages all thanks to a fantastic tour led by Catherine Sawyer, a historian and archaeologist. Whilst it's possible to explore the island solo, I would highly recommend a tour and Catherine alternates her tours across many of the islands. When we made our way back to the beach where we were dropped off, it was the trusty Sea King once again returning us to St Mary's and the tide had dropped low enough for us to use a short planked board. The lady working on the boat told us that it was her dad's boat that would be going out that evening to watch the women's gig races and we couldn't resist. So we spent a gorgeous evening out on the water watching and cheering on at the race. An absolute must if your visit coincides with the women's races on Wednesdays or the men's on Fridays. Thursday was spent on the island of St Mary's where we each rented a bike to get around the substantially larger island that bit faster. We first stopped at a nature reserve where we wandered along boardwalks that led us to a bird hide. We had the place to ourselves, watching on as birds had no idea that we were there. A walking loop took us past an honesty shop, the Holy Vale Vineyard, and we got very excited when we came across a group of eels. A lazy lunch was spent at Palestry Beach with a cheeky go on the tree swing, before we then cycled across to Peninnas Head to see some pretty awesome rocks, and a coastline, and one of the Skybus planes taking off. 
After returning the bikes in town, we collected our pre-ordered Thai takeaway from one of the food trucks and headed to Porthcresser Beach to eat it. A great spot to hang out in the evenings. On this particular Thursday, we were treated to a pop-up store selling pims and crepes too. On Friday, we headed across to Briar and spent the morning following Will Wagstaff on a guided nature and wildlife tour of part of the island. A treasure trove of information, I would highly recommend a tour with Will and throughout our stay, he operated tours across most of the inhabited islands, so you can take your pick. As we were coming to the end of our holiday, we chose to spend the afternoon relaxing at the gorgeous Rushy Bay, which had sensational views out to Samson and Tresco, with their swathes of white sand beaches and turquoise waters. And I even went for a dip, albeit a short one, as the waters were still very cold for my liking in May. The fog had rolled in on Saturday, so we had a lazy start. Stashed our bags at a local hotel and wandered along part of St Mary's coastal path to Juliet's Garden, where we had a big lunch before heading to the airport. I won't go into what happened next, but if you're interested in how things went a bit wrong, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. The budget. We knew this would be an expensive trip going into it and agreed that it was unlikely we would return any time in the near future due to costs. So we did everything like it was our one and only chance, but appreciate that there are ways to keep the budget lower. The accommodation was very expensive and the apartment itself was, in my opinion, overpriced for what it was. I stomached it with the knowledge that the cost was worth the brilliant location. It was £50 per person per night and an extra £71.25 per person for the upgrade to a cabin on the train for the first night. The transportation totaled £359.10 and, and this included a return train from London to Penzance, an airport shuttle transfer, a one-way flight on a tiny aircraft, a one-way ride on the ferry to get back to the mainland, and then daily boat trip tickets around the islands with the exception of just one day. Using the Boatman's Association, the standard fares were £13 return, with the Samson boat including the dinghy being a little bit more and then the wildlife sightseeing trip being £18, which we felt was an absolute bargain. Food shops saw us through all breakfasts, many packed lunches and a handful of evening meals and snacks. Eating out included a couple of high-end cafe meals, a couple of takeaways consumed at Porthcresser Beach and one very special meal on the quay at the end of our trip. The activities cost was relatively low as we found ourselves usually wandering the islands with no cost. The main exceptions were admission into Tresco Abbey Gardens, bike rental on St Mary's and the two tours that we took. As we had to stay an extra night on the island due to cancelled flights, we were reimbursed by our insurance company for this so we paid nothing despite the hotel costing £180 per night for the room. As we couldn't use our train tickets dated for the Saturday, we were able to cancel these but endured a £5 admin fee. The final oddity is still a bit of a head scratcher for me. We each paid £139.50 for our helicopter ride back to the mainland. We knew if it was cancelled due to weather and were placed on the ferry that there'd be no refund of the price difference. But we agreed to take the gamble because I really wanted to experience flying on a helicopter. After our trip, the helicopter company reimbursed each of us £51.50. Not sure if this was the fair difference between the two, but we didn't want to ask. In the end, our trip totaled £1,058.45 per person, based on two people sharing for one week. My Google Maps. Like with many of my bigger trips, I've made a My Google Maps pinning many of the places that we visited and have tried where possible to include a pin logo that resembles what's there. A photo if we have one, and a description if it's appropriate. I'll leave a link to the map in the description. I'd love to know if you're planning a trip to the Isles of Scilly, or maybe after having watched this video, you now want to go. Does the price or the journey time to get there put you off? Is there something you wouldn't do to lower the costs? Do let me know in those comments below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd be most grateful if you consider giving this video a like and you might be interested in my Hours of Silly series, so feel free to click on the playlist to see more.